So this is our second trip to Ghana as Team Chicago. We came here last year as well. We discovered that we felt like the local team is amazing and they were incredibly helpful. It, it's a great place. We've developed these relationships with the, with the staff here. And so I just felt like if I was gonna go back anywhere else, it'd be great to come back to somewhere familiar and know that we can make an, an impact. That's why I think we were able to schedule so many cases because we knew that the staff could handle it. It's very eye-opening to see what they have and don't have and what they need and how much we can help them with so much that we brought. So since we got everything unpacked super early, we were able to actually go to the clinic with the surgeons and see the whole screening process and the clinical process. So I'm a hand surgeon back home and I do other things, but I don't see too much of the pediatric hand surgery that I've seen here. Uh, the severe burns and the fused fingers at finger at, at birth, uh, syndactyly. When I send him to the school, at times the children will hold his hand and be observing it socially. It will help him a lot. I think we take hand function for granted. So to release them at such a young age, where things are so developmentally important, this will allow them to gain excellent hand function for the rest of their lives. And that's really meaningful to me. This is definitely a different um, set of cases that we would typically see at home in the United States. And I feel like the people here really, really need our help. Some of the cases were so unique and so far out there. There's no textbook for this kind of stuff. We just put our heads together and I kind of joked at the end of the week, he may have taught me more about Hanser than I taught him. But nonetheless, that's Africa. Doing five cleft lips back to back yesterday afternoon was definitely like an unforgettable experience. Got to work with an amazing surgeon who's done 5,000 of them in his lifetime. So I kind of went back and forth between the two because I definitely had a lot to learn from both of them. A cleft lip isn't just an aesthetic concern. It affects speech, feeding, swallowing. To give birth like that is not, it's not easy. What's we going through some of them don't even have names yet because the families don't want to identify them by anything and get their, their blue card or their identification card. They don't want their picture taken the way that they have their lips or their palettes. We want to finish everything before we name the baby. It's not about the religion or baptism at all. We just want to do it like that and to see the face of their parents when they see their child, that their lips are together. I'm very, very happy. It's just wonderful. They did it very well. I was operating, it was about 3.15. I looked out, the windows were completely dark. It seemed like it was six or seven o'clock at night and the sun had set, but it hadn't and about 10 or 15 minutes later, it started pouring, worse than you've seen in any movie. And the water was coming through the window like somebody was blowing it through a straw. You could see, you could hear it, it was so loud, and it was, even if you looked out there, all you could see was like sheets of rain, and it was gray, and I was like, whoa. And pretty soon the room started flooding, and then shortly the power went out. But this was probably the, the most severe that I've been a part of, and that it was out for you know, what was that, 10, 15 minutes or so. We had children, really small kids, um, who had just woken up from surgery and, and needed um, some extra care. I think every case on here has a little bit more of a kind of fear factor than it does back in the States. If the power goes out, you don't have suction. What do you do with this? And Just as I'm trying to suction him, the power completely went out. And then I was like, okay, now what do I do? Thankfully, my monitor was still working. It was on battery power. So I'm like, okay, I can bag him. And then I just started yelling for help and suction. And then all of a sudden, everybody was there trying to figure out a way to suction him, trying to do whatever we could to get him through it. We got to a place where we felt like he was safe and we took him to the recovery area. And then once we were in the PACU, the lights came back on and we were able to suction him. The OR literally flooding and the power going off? Yeah, I'd never have been a part of that. I'd never seen that before. But that time between when the lights went down and when it, we knew it was safe for him to go to recovery was, was scary. We're not used to this, but they're used to it. You know, it forces us to, to be creative <laughs> and to, to think on the fly, but everything worked out in the end for me, thankfully. You know, I will always forever remember, you know, Jacob this year, you know, Jacob. I mean, to have such a significant amount <laughs> of a mass. He was presented to us by the local team as 
a neck mass, presumably a goiter or a, a enlarged thyroid, because that is what is very thyroid. prevalent here. Yeah, you can see like the previous scar. Despite the limited um, resources you can have here, they, they did have imaging previously that helped us know what to expect during the case. I'm hoping, since it's benign, to have a nice clear plane between here. That's what I'm hoping. <laughs> but everything in terms of like the carotid, that should be fine. So they, they hand picked this case for us. So the first thing that they sent to us through WhatsApp uh, was, was a picture of that case. They said like, what do you think? Oh, sure. Like, we can help. Like, we have amazing anesthesia staff, we have amazing nurses, amazing surgeons. I'm 100% sure that we can help him and, and uh, solve his problem. Look at me. I went to the hospital and they took the surgery for me around 2010. Then from 2019 coming, I saw that it has started generating again. Okay, formerly I was a minister. I was a, a pastor and I came to retirement around 2017. And now I cannot work. So after the retirement, the pain started coming again. Sometimes he tried to take his life just because of how the pain was, uh, I mean, disturbing him. Sometimes he said he, he couldn't even breathe well and all that. We have been to so many places, so we are not even having money to do that surgery. They went to some other medical professional and they said that, you know, some chance of success, but or not, but it's going to cost this much money. And so, you know, he was um, already on that process to getting it removed, but it was just a financial barrier for him. And so having OI being able to do this for him was for free was obviously a big deal. We didn't run into too many surprises. And so because of that, it, it went relatively quickly for given the size of that mass. Hey! Put the camera. Oh, move the lap. I saw a picture of how the patient was looking and it was amazing after the operation was done for the patient. We were ready to get it in and get it out, and he's doing well. Like a few hours later, he was smiling, like, like it never, like, like it never was never there, which is pretty awesome to see uh, a patient uh, recover so fast. Everything went well. Okay. So he saw for the first time his his neck and his torso without that mass, and we all thought that was just the greatest thing ever. We felt so excited when we saw him coming out. It was so amazing, and we, all, we were all happy, thanking God for a successful operation. Yeah. Me and the family, everybody, we are very happy, and <laughs> we say, God bless you. It looks good, yeah. You can lift their arms like this? You can dance? Yeah. <laughs> They look great, my friend. I give a big thanks to my family, my wife, and everybody who is concerning of me in my life. Big smile, Jacob. My heart is full of joy. I believe that from now going, I will do more than what I could not do. Any questions, my friend? No questions? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. It's a pleasure, my friend. Yes. Have a good life. Behave, okay? We went through a giant storm, the OR flooded, and everybody was just like, yeah, well, it's fine, just keep operating. Like, it was awesome. It's been a great team. I'm really happy. I, we have done a lot of volume, but we haven't sacrifice quality. Everybody's here with the same goal in mind, to help the patients and to help the people here. And it's awesome to be able to be a part of that. And to go back to the fundamentals, it brings us back to the notion that, you know, we're all connected by each other. The encounter with Operation International has been something good to the hospital, to Ghana, and 
most especially to our patients. We have taken a bit of their pain and worries away. It's a win-and-win -win situation for everyone. Like we're building a sustainable like model here. Like we're not only teaching, like we're also learning, but at the same time there is a lot of trust on both sides. That's why we come back, that's why we do this every year, that's why I wanted to be here on my birthday. My light shines brighter here. It feels like climbing a mountain. Uh, very slow going in the beginning, very hard. Seems like it's an impossible task as the days go by and the patients finish and the line grows shorter and you can see the peak and now we're finally at the summit and I feel pretty great. So you see the base of the gallbladder, you see the two structures connected to the gallbladder, and that's considered the critical view of safety. It is great that you get to see that right ahead of so well today. We hope to be able to help the local surgeons help their people more as well. If we just come and do what we do and we leave, we're not making as much of an impression. A whole room of people can learn the anatomy that you're not going to be able to teach in, in an open case. Yeah.